know your cholesterol numbers like you know your blood pressure. Your cholesterol number is a, is a total cholesterol, but there are components of cholesterol that we really need to know about. The two simplest ones to remember are LDL and HDL. LDL, if you will, should be as low as possible. That's, that's the atherogenic one, the one that's most specifically responsible for blocking arteries. HDL is more of the healthy cholesterol, if you will. It should be as high as possible, and that's the good stuff. All of those things go into having a high total cholesterol. So there are some rare people who have high total cholesterols but have so much good cholesterol that it's not really an issue. Cholesterol is um, generally produced in the liver and your body can use it or does use it for things like making nerves and nerve sheaths, uh, producing hormones. Uh, but uh, in the Western diet, in Western society, there is a real excess which unfortunately becomes inflamed and processed in deposits in arterial walls and can lead to certainly vulnerability for heart attack and stroke. I, we have made some inroads. There are public health initiatives, activity initiatives, um, school lunches has been a huge step forward in my opinion. You can't, you used to be able to get through high school on uh, soda and french fries, you can't do that anymore. Uh, the the uh, junk food, snack foods have largely been taken out. There are activity initiatives certainly, but the, the drift away from an active lifestyle is still certainly a problem. The best diets, or, or the most, at least diets that people are, are reasonably inclined to adapt, will only lower uh, total uh, and LDL cholesterol by 10 or 15 percent. So if your numbers are way off, then uh, we're not going to achieve it. We used to say, do your best with diet, and then if it's still not right, get on a medication. Well, that's a bad model for several reasons. Number one, it talks about diet as some sort of temporary attempt, not something that you need to adapt to for life, which clearly one should. Number two, the medications have properties above and beyond addressing cholesterol uh, numbers. So in people at risk or people who already have heart disease or stroke, clearly they should be on medication, period, in addition to adapting to a better lifestyle and diet. And by all means, if your doctor recommends a medication, by all means, take it. This group of drugs called statins are not only cholesterol-lowering drugs, but they actively promote arterial health protect against heart attack and stroke. We tend to think of medications as labeling us as sick. In this case, that's certainly not the case. Think of these as health or wellness promoters because that's clearly what statins do. Uh, we talk about family history of heart disease like there's something magic about having a certain last name. Well, certainly that's not the case. There are certain biologic inheritable factors. One of those can be cholesterol. There are uh, some familial syndromes which are of interest to somebody like me who spends a lot of time in lipids and cholesterol. Uh, and occasionally somebody can inherit really no ability to, to, clear, to clear cholesterol out of their system or a very limited ability. That's not that rare. That's one in 500 individuals. They have very high cholesterol. They're at very much at risk for having heart attack and stroke in their 40s and 50s. Uh, and those people need to be identified and treated with appropriate medications early in life.